all pray with me. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Friends, these are weary-making days. These are times when it is easy and understandable that you might be losing heart. For so many of us, the past several years have worn us down. From the election of 2016 through the waves of protest and uprising, from the impeachments through to a pandemic, from virtual schools to vaccines to another election to the storming of the capital of the United States, to a war in Gaza, to a genocide, to a war in Lebanon and now maybe Iran, another tail-spinning election with changing candidates and assassination attempts. Weary would be a reasonable response when it seems that every day is more dizzying than the last, every election more consequential than the last, every bomb dropped more deadly than the last. But it's more, it's more than weary. We, you and me, are drenched in grief. Grief over loved ones who have died, family and friends and beloved pets, spouses and parents and children. Grief over those not dead who are lost from our lives nonetheless. Grief over jobs and loves and dreams lost. Grief over the terrible storms that have wrecked across our country just this month, whole communities washed away. Grief over the hope of what our country could be and what it is. Grief over the immeasurable loss of life through war and weaponized disease and hunger and displacement. So many of us are just drenched in grief weighed down by the sheer magnitude of it all. And so on All Saints Day, we allow ourselves some space to notice that grief, to take account of what has been lost, of who has been lost, to remember, and then to bring it all to God whose infinite heart may be the only container big enough to hold the grief of this weary world. These days that we live in are dizzying. And yet, ours is not the first time in history when terrible event has followed terrible event has followed terrible event. Ours is not even the bleakest period in history and it need not become so. The church is old, ancient even. It has survived over 2,000 years of the tides of history. Since that stone was rolled away, there has been an unbroken chain of witnesses to the hope and power of Jesus Christ. Even when most of Christendom lost its integrity, ingratiating itself to empire and wealth, even then, Faithful Christians have shown forth testifying in word and deed to Christ's gospel of liberation and salvation. When the church's institutions were making their bed with the Constantinian Empire and securing their wealth, the desert fathers and mothers gave themselves to lives of prayer and radical simplicity. When the Spanish Inquisition was spreading fear and violence in the name of Christ, the mystics held forth in their hermitages, testifying to a God who desired love, not war. 
When Christians defended slavery as a Bible-backed economic practice, abolitionists rose up for freedom. They wrote tracts and pamphlets, and they led people into freedom. When the Third Reich sought to justify its genocide through Christian reason, and most were satisfied to be complacent, the Confessing Church, led by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, declared that the church must not simply bandage the victims under the wheel, but jam a spoke in the wheel itself. In the 1980s, when the government and religious authorities abandoned gay men to die of a horrible, mysterious disease, Old South partnered with other churches and began offering a healing service for people living with and dying from AIDS. Beloved, take heart, for we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, a great cloud of witnesses that have sought to expand God's love since 1669, opening up the waters of baptism to all who would come forth. A great cloud of witnesses to include Judge Samuel Sewell, who took responsibility for his part in the witch trials of the 1660s and spent the rest of his life in public repentance. A great cloud of witnesses, people who fought with their works and with their lives for God's great kingdom of justice that it might finally come. A great cloud of witnesses. The Reverend Eleanor Yo, who fought tirelessly for abortion rights. A great cloud of witnesses. The Reverend David King one of the first out gay ministers, a student of this church. A great cloud of witnesses, Prince Harry Huff, who filled this house of God with music and joy. A great cloud of witnesses. So take heart. Take heart, we are not alone. A great cloud of witnesses, those saints who surround us, those who have gone on to glory and those whose hands we can still hold, those who urge us to live out the best of the gospel, to speak the truth in love, to work for justice, to sacrifice for a greater good, to offer hospitality to strangers and extend compassion to all to lift up the lowly and bring down the mighty, to testify to the power of the risen Christ who is making all things new. All things. Among us in this room even today are those who have found a way to live faithfully in these grief-drenched times. Saints who have taken to the streets in protest for black lives, Saints who have held hands at the bedside of people dying of COVID. Saints who work hand in hand doing cleanups and building hope at Mass and Cass. Saints who are shifting policy toward equity and justice. Saints who are setting their own kitchen tables, cooking up a feast and inviting strangers in. Saints who are writing the truth in their reporting and scholarship in a time when truth and integrity are in short supply. Saints who are stewarding our institutions to live with integrity and compassion. Saints who are bringing up children in a faith that does justice, raising up the next generation of good ancestors. A great cloud of witnesses. We have not, we are not doing this perfectly. We all have room to grow. And bless us, we each have a little bit more time to do so. So while we're here, take heart. Take heart, for we are not alone. We are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Take heart. Amen. Amen.